So is analytical psychology a religion? Well, I think a lot depends on how you define religion. There's, uh, the analytical psychology doesn't have an organized community. It has disorganized communities. <laughs> um, it doesn't have worship services. It doesn't have a specific God image. It doesn't have a creation myth like the, the Genesis sort of thing. Um, it doesn't have an ethical system. It doesn't have a set of commandments. Okay? Um, so in all these ways, it's certainly not an organized religion. But I do think that the practice of analytical psychology can substitute for organized religion in some ways, because I think that turning to the unconscious for guidance is a spiritual practice. And seeing the, you're not supposed to see the self technically as the divine itself. That the self technically, if you're going to be faithful to Jung's definition, is an image of the divine. And we don't know what the relationship is between the divine itself and that image that's intrapsychic. But for most of us, in practice, it's, it's very close to thinking about it as the divine itself, I think, for most of us, if we're honest about it. When you do this in front of a group, actually, it is, um, it's drama. So you, um, the group goes through a catharsis as the protagonist goes through her agony. And um, so it has a very strong impact on, on a group. That's why I think it's important to do this kind of work in front of groups, because um, not everybody has an opportunity to get this profound an access to dreams. I don't either, because if I work on my own dreams, I can't get this far. So um, um, it, uh, this kind of relationship is the privilege of the therapy room. And as you take it out of the therapy room on stage and you have other people go through it, you get a response of privilege, of gratitude, a feeling of that you've gone through something yourself. And I think that that's a very important part of it. So I, I do think that it has a community relevance to do this in front of a group. The shift is not from Pisces to Aquarius, but the shift is ne from Neptunian to Uranian. That that is the same thing. But when we're talking about concepts, we need to understand that that is A, the same thing, but B, what does it mean? And that's what we're going to talk about now. But in the spring of 2012, you start seeing there's your, set, your Uranus Pluto square. So it gets tighter and tighter, more intense. This is the summer of 2012. And then it goes away. And this goes on. I'm just going to tell you, we don't have to watch it. This goes on back and forth until 2015 that Pluto-Uranus square. Okay, so what does all that mean? <clears throat> I'll give you an example of manifestation in the real world that I would be looking for to understand these things. 